Welcome to Book Snoop's YouTube channel. Today I'll be reviewing No Relation by Terry Fallis, a slice of life comedy about identity and finding a place of belonging. It tells the story of an aspiring New York City novelist who, in a single day, finds his career and personal life both turned upside down. On top of this, the reader learns that his ironic name, Ernest Hemingway, has been the cause of many misfortunes throughout his life. While Ernest faces pressures by his father to join in the family business, he also forms a collective of individuals who, like him, struggle to escape the shackles of their famous names and come to terms with who they are as unique individuals. The writing is of a stream of consciousness style, the sort of dry humor that is much like everyday sarcastic and self-pitying thoughts that cross people's minds. The prose style is, on the surface, plain, simple, and mundane but does have character to it. The use of situational irony and other literary devices are effective in adding to the humor. The writing does, however, often break the show-don't-tell rule, meaning there are many times when characters' thoughts and feelings are said outright rather than described. Whether the reader likes or dislikes this will depend on personal taste. The novel, while mild in terms of language and subject matter, is not intended for younger readers. Not only are there swears present, but some of the humor and subject matter might be difficult for inexperienced readers to fully grasp. Moments of slower pacing might also affect the book's readability for some. That being said, the pacing grows a little slow after the initial drama of the novel's beginning. And while there are moments of interest and excitement, there is also a lot of what some readers might call fluff or packing to fill the bulk of the novel. The story does immediately catch the reader's attention by having two fairly extreme misfortunes of life realized one after the other. The story answers the question of what would happen to a person who suddenly found his life reset, in a sense. The story also leaves readers intrigued by not revealing all of the information about the protagonist right away. The story can definitely be called unexpected and unpredictable. It is far from cliché, but instead unique and imaginative. Readers won't have read a book with the same story as this one. On the other hand, some of the themes or subject matter can be seen as cliché or old-fashioned, such as the aggravating and outdated concept of a woman wanting a man's job but being unable to overcome the tradition of a firstborn son's inheritance. Other more uplifting themes include singularity, the idea of living your own adventures instead of someone else's, as well as belonging and understanding each other creating genuine human connections, and having immersive human experiences. The protagonist as a character is likable for his witty sense of humor and rawness, so to speak. He will also appeal to aspiring writers who can sympathize with his plights. However, the protagonist is arguably the only realistic character. The other characters in the novel are certainly interesting, with traits and quirks that are both amusing and distinctive but many of these characters can be called flat. The author creates a very likable protagonist, but some readers may find that the others fade into the background. Due to the less dramatic nature of the novel and the slice of life style, some readers may find themselves indifferent. Engagement is arguably on and off throughout due to the dry spells and inconsistent pacing of action. The dialogue of the novel is just as mundane as the prose, a quality some will like and others will dislike. The way characters talk is arguably bothersome in its ineffectiveness. Some readers enjoy quick moments of conversation that bring a smile to your face, but others will find nothing but annoyance in scenes that could have easily been scrapped from the book. The author works setting into the novel in an appropriate and effective way. Phallus uses travel as part of the narrative using setting purposefully rather than throwing in pointless tourism. The places become part of the protagonist's character growth, but do not take up too much description in the novel. The plot of the novel is arguably scattered all over the place, but mimics real life a little better than artificially designed novel and movie plots. What are supposed to be big plot revelations are suitable, but predictable, making for a roller coaster esque plotline but ending after a climatic moment with foreseeable falling action elements. It is highly cliché, 
but sometimes enjoyable when writers, such as Fallis, pair up all of the characters at the story's conclusion. But here, these pairings are thrown into the final chapter with no ease, development, or even gentle hints. For many readers, this may make the connections and relationships seem trivial, fake, and unnecessary. With all of these comments in place, it's time to look at the rubric. Attempting to judge the novel as objectively as possible, I have given no relation the following scores. Quality of writing, level 3. Readability, level 3. Pacing, level 3. Story uniqueness, level 4. Theme slash message, level 3. Characters, 3.5. Engagement, level 3. Quality of dialogue, level 3. Setting, level 3. And plot, level 3. This gives the book a total score of 63 out of 100. You can compare this to the rating of 72 out of 100 on Goodreads. It is worthwhile noting that the novel won the Stephen Leacock Medal for humor. And now for the genre breakdown. For drama and humor, 5 stars and for romance, two stars. Another genre that you can consider is Slice of Life. My personal opinion of the book is slightly torn. The story failed to impress me as the novel failed my 100-page test, meaning it failed to catch my attention before I reached page 100. For this particular book, I would have been happy to stop reading were it not for the purpose of writing this review. I also found the characters spread thin and flat, with the exception of the witty and likable protagonist. On top of this, I found the prose too mundane and the dialogue quote-unquote fake. The conversation between characters was very staged rather than raw and genuine, and there was a lot of dialogue lumped in the novel, with very little in regards to in-between moments of action or description. That all being said, I was impressed by the uniqueness of the story and I could not help but find happiness in the endearing themes presented in the way each of these characters learns an important life lesson by the end of the story. Overall, Terry Fallis' No Relation is a charming and happy read, but one that could not hold my attention. Experienced readers like myself might find that the quality of the writing and the believability of the characters distracts too much from their ability to fully enjoy this novel. But there is something to be said for the witty and uplifting story, one which will bring a smile to the faces of many readers.